ERS 1000 was one of my favorite courses last year. Uh, I find it gives me a really good base for upper year courses. Uh, it has a very interdisciplinary sort of view, so you get a little bit of chemistry and biology um, and geography, and it's all sort of mixed in. With the environmental science degree, you can either go the science route or the arts route. Um, so in the arts side, there's courses that are like um, critical environmental thinking and natural resource management. And on the science side, there's more um, like aquatic chemistry and sampling and uh, stats. Um, I find the really interesting part about ERS 1000 is the uh, opportunity for service learning. So you get to go out and actually do work in the field. Um, for example, I went to the uh, Halliburton Muskoka Children's Water Festival and I taught kids about uh, river systems and like things like that and I thought it was a really good opportunity to kind of use what you know even though you've only had the first year course. Um, the great thing about first year is all the assignments are very like wide and varied in um, learning styles. So some of them are papers, some of them are um, in seminar presentations and there's some labs. It's all very different but as long as you kind of have a basic understanding on how to do most of the assignments you gen uh, generally end up doing pretty well. I'm actually hoping to do a master's and possibly a PhD in environmental science um, because I'm enjoying it so much and I'm learning a lot and I realize there's a, there's a big need to make a change and to learn new things um, and there's definitely a great market for uh, environmental science jobs right now. I think about 25% of the job sector so um, I think that I have a, a lot of options but personally I just enjoy um, being here and studying so I'll probably go for a master's. We, we want both people to come out of the course with uh, a sense of environmental literacy and environmental citizenship, that they have a sense of, of what these environmental problems are and what we, we as a society can do. Beyond that, we also hope that students have a good sense of what, what they're going to take in upper year courses so that they have, you know, they've identified some of the things that they're interested in, whether that's, whether that's indigenous environmental studies or sustainable agriculture or environmental chemistry or environmental policy, that they've started to identify some of these things that they're interested in and that they've started to acquire the skills that they're going to need for those courses. The environmental problems are the, the challenge of the next few generations. We have no shortage of things that we need to deal with. It's not just a science program and it's not just an arts program. It's about understanding the dimensions between those two. So the fact that we have those both offerings is, is unique and the fact that we have so many courses for undergraduate students to take, such a wide range of uh, disciplines and themes is also uh, something that's unique. Another big advantage is actually right here. We have 1,400 acres of, uh, of natural areas on our campus and so we can actually get out. We don't have to jump in a school bus and go to do a field lab, we just walk outside. Not surprisingly, students get jobs. I think that's the first thing to say, is students get jobs. Uh, many of them in the environmental field, some decide that that's not where they want to work, and that's, that's fine, they, you know, they'll end up doing other things. Um, but they get jobs because they have learned how to think about issues critically, and they've learned how to write well, and they've learned how to communicate with others, whether it's in a presentation or in a one-on-one -on -one situation. They learn those things, and that's, those are key skills that you need in any career.